Yeah, I think the very first experience as a first as a high school student was a English teacher who had us give reports. And what became so pronounced for me was if you'd said the word and, she'd go, no and. Or you'd say, ah, uh, she'd go, no ah. Uh. She interrupted the, the speaker. I had a, my best friend just became so disoriented she couldn't even speak. Mm -hmm. But for me, it really set me in motion to think about, to stop and to pause. And, you know, I, it's not that I never say and or uh, but I try to think before I put that sound in there that it's better to just pause, mm -hmm. say your next sentence and continue on. And so if I really think about it, it works well. But sometimes when you're in a casual conversation, you're trying to think about what you're doing in a speech and you get nervous, it's easy to do that. And uh, I just try to keep it out of what it is that I'm saying. Then when I went to Washington State University, I was a criminal justice student. I was a teaching assistant, assistant while I was working on my master's degree. My senior faculty member was going to teach a course on women in the criminal justice system, so he said, I, I think I need a woman in here doing this. And of course, in 1975, there weren't, very, there weren't many women in the criminal justice system. So with that piece, he said to me, you, know, you have a knack for teaching, and so have you thought about it? And he brought me a job description. I actually uh, applied and went to Stephen F. Austin State University in Nacogdoches, Texas, and the rest is sort of history. Mm -hmm. and from that point on, I have been a teacher or a consultant and, and working, and so public speaking and speaking in general is just you know core to what I do. But it's not always natural, but it's, it's what I do.